From the big picture of statistics, we know that our goal in statistical inference is to infer from the sample data some conclusion about the wider population of the that the sample represents. In the first section, distribution of sample proportions, we investigated the obvious fact that random samples vary. Because different samples may lead to different con conclusions, we cannot be certain that our conclusions are correct. Statistical inferences uses the language of probability to say how trustworthy our conclusions are. We learn two types of inference, confidence intervals and hypothesis tests. We construct a confidence interval when our goal is to estimate a population parameter or a difference between population parameters. We conduct a hypothesis test when our goal is to test a claim about a population parameter or a difference between a population parameter. Both types of inference are based on the sampling distributions of sample statistics. For both, we report probabilities that state what would happen if we use the inference method repeatedly. In this section, we build on the ideas in distribution of sample proportions to reason as we do in inference, but we do not do formal inference procedures now. Instead, we focus on the logic of inference. We use categorical data and proportions to investigate the logic of inference. But all of the ideas we discuss here apply to quantitative variables and means. So let's talk about confidence intervals. When our goal is to estimate a population proportion, we select a random sample from the population and use the sample proportion as an estimate. Of course, random samples vary, so we want to include a statement about the amount of error that may be present. Because sample proportions vary in a predictable way, we can also make a probability statement about how confident we are in the process we use to estimate the population proportion. We can find many examples of confidence intervals reported in the media. Here's an example. Let's look at. Oops, I need to get rid of that. Sorry. Okay. Do you have problems sleeping? The National Sleep Foundation sponsors an annual poll. In 2011, the poll found that 43% of Americans between the ages of 13 and 64 say that they rarely or never got a good night's sleep on weeknights. More than half, 60%, say that they experience a sleep problem every night or almost every night, i.e. snoring, waking in the night, waking up too early, or feeling unrefreshed when they get up in the morning, as reported at www.sleepfoundation.org. Are these percentages sam sample statistics or population parameters? These statistics describe a response of a sample of Americans. Let's focus on the 60% who say that they experience a sleep problem every night or almost every night. Does this mean that 60% of all Americans have the same experience? Well, no, this is a sample statistic from a poll, but from the sample, we want to infer what percentage of the population, the overall number of Americans, um, the population does have sleep problems. Since the percentage of, with sleep problems will differ from one sample to the next, we need to make a statement about how much error we might ex expect between a sample percentage and the population percentage. In the poll methodology and definition section of the article, we find more detailed information about the poll. According to the Sleep Foundation website, the 2011 Sleep in America annual poll was conducted for the National Sleep Foundation by WBNA Market Research using a random sample of 1,508 adults between the ages of 13 and 64. The margin of error is 2.5% points at the 95% confidence interval. And there's a little, yeah. There's a lot of important information here. First, the sample is random. Second, the sample size is 1,508. Third, the margin of error is 2.5%. And the last one is the confidence level is 95%. From this information, we can construct an interval that we are reasonably confident contains the population proportion. The, the sample statistic plus or minus the margin of error, that's 60% plus 2 plus or minus 2.5%. So you take 60% and you subtract 2.5%. That's where you get the smaller number, 57.5. And then you take the sample statistic, 60 plus 2.5. That's where you get the larger number, 62.5. This interval is an example of a confidence interval. We interpret the interval this way. We are 95% confident that between 57.5% and 62.5% of all Americans experience a sleep problem every night or almost every night. So let's scroll down a little bit. 
How confident are we that this interval contains the population proportion? Oops. In this case, we are 95% confident. That means that 95% of the time, a random sample of this size will have at most 2.5% error, either above or below the 60% mark. So 95% of these intervals will contain the true population proportion. Another way to say this is that this method accurately estimates the population proportion 95% of the time.